Hi everyone, welcome to uh, the first day of class, or the first video I should say. Um, the first project that we're going to be looking on in the book is going to be what's called um, Kirinoki. It's a traditional Japanese um, method to making small drinking cups, vessels, um, and what's interesting is that you are actually, instead of taking material and building it together, you're actually t working from a solid piece of clay and carving away clay. So. I have your bags of clay. And the first thing we're going to do is get familiar with some tools and the clay and how we can go about sort of setting ourselves up. So, as I unwrap the clay, I'm going to use my wire tool to take off a large section. Now, you kind of have to decide on how big of a cup that, big or small of a cup that you want. So this guy is good for taking off large masses of clay. So I can just run it right through there. I can maybe break this up into quarters or halves, however large you want your cup to be. And I'm gonna sort of work with something around this size. This is about a pound and a quarter or so. It's really important to cover your clay up. If you don't, if you leave it uncovered, it's just gonna dry out on you. So cover it up thoroughly. The first thing we need to do is basically kind of rough out the form, right? So if you want a sort of cylindrical cup, we're going to take this lump of clay and make it into more of a cylinder form. If you want more of a square, four-sided cup, then we can work and change the shape to be a little bit tighter if you want. So most of you all probably do not have like a uh, ceramics table like I do, but I'm going to be working on uh, a piece of cardboard. If you have, again, from the previous video, a piece of wood, it's something to work on too. You can literally work on um, like an old dish towel, that'll work as well. So what I'm going to do is first kind of pound this into more of a circular shape. So I'm just going to kind of use my palms and kind of work this into a little bit more of a rounder shape. So I'm going for more of um, a traditional Japanese style cup, what's called a, a unomi, and that sort of means to drink from. So they're good for water, tea, um, there's typically no handles on them. Probably a little bit smaller than your average coffee cup, but like bigger than um, like a small child's cup. So I'm kind of working it, and I do want to get the bottoms and the tops somewhat like kind of even and resolved too. So as I'm making it a little bit more narrow, I'm sort of trying to work and keep the bottom somewhat consistent and even as the top too. Kind of can take it to the table, start rolling it. The nice thing about hand building is that it's pretty intuitive in terms of what you can do with the clay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is decide what's going to be the top and what's going to be the bottom. And it doesn't have to be straight. It can be maybe like tapered inward slightly. Kind of like that shape actually. And then I'm going to take my needle tool and I'm going to sort of give myself a guideline of what clay I'm removing. So this will be the clay that I'm actually carving away. Now, when you're pulling your clay right out of the bag, you might realize like, wow, this clay is like really, really soft. And as I'm carving away, it's starting to get really flimsy and weak. That may be the case. Each clay bag is going to be slightly different in consistency. But if it is really wet and it's having sort of structural issues, you're going to want to let that clay stiffen up. So for this project, we'll probably be using these two tools predominantly. Um, they're called trimming tools or loop tools. And essentially this is gonna allow us a way to kind of carve away the clay. So we're just kind of roughing things out right now and trying to take away a large mass of clay in this center area. So I can just simply start scooping away the clay. Now the clay is gonna be removed pretty easily. I think it's gonna be really easy too to remove too much clay. We want our walls to be, I would say about a quarter of an inch thick. Um, the thinner they are, the more fragile things are going to be. So you're just literally getting in here and roughing out the clay. So if 
you can see I'm starting to carve away. Maybe I can tip this down even more. So this is really different than I'm sh adding clay and making a coil pot or doing a slab thing if you've ever done any ceramics before in the past. This is a really different subtractive process rather than an additive process. The book goes into really great detail on how to sort of complete this process, but I also wanted just to include a small video of myself doing it in sort of real time. So when it's your carving away, you're noticing that the inside's kind of rough. Don't worry about that. We'll be able to smooth all this down once we've gone down all the way to the bottom. So let's just say you've gone all the way to the bottom. Um, typically, um, in a lot of Japanese forms, they have what's called a foot on the bottom. Um, a foot is going to do two things. It's going to sort of lift it up off the table a little bit. Um, you'll be able to see a shadow line underneath. Um, tip, this also just makes the pot look a little bit more resolved and kind of refined. Um, I do have some examples over here. So here is a cup that does have a foot on the bottom. So you can see that when you look at it, it's lifting it up off the table. So we're actually gonna go ahead and um, flip this guy upside down and take away clay in the center area and also on this exterior area. So then when it sits on this table, it's a little bit more just um, refined. Be aware that the narrower the foot is, the more it's gonna wanna topple over the wider the base, the more stable it's going to be, but a little bit more just kind of visually heavy it kind of looks. So I can go and sort of use this larger loop tool and kind of get in here and slowly trim this away. This type of process does not lend to making things like perfect. It's really not um, in any way re a representation to throwing on the wheel. So I'm slowly turning and taking away this clay. The deeper I go, the taller the foot's, foot will be. A lot of the refining and cleaning up is gonna be done at the end, so it's all right if things are definitely looking a little rough. If you like that rough look, you should keep it. If you are someone that's a little bit more particular, and likes things to be a little bit more smooth and even and symmetrical. Well, the clay responds to your fingers very, very quickly. I think Melissa Weiss's book does a good job of sort of balancing um, this rough, raw look to something a little bit more refined. So it's kind of like in this middle ground, which is a nice sort of balance. So I'm just trying to go deeper, I'm not trying to take away any more of this area, I'm just trying to go down lower. All right. So then I can kind of work on the center and I might actually grab this smaller loop tool to kind of get in there. And maybe instead of turning the cup, I'll actually turn the tool to take away this clay. I think that looks pretty good. So now you can see like things are starting to take shape. It's really rough still, but if you want, you can kind of get in here with your fingers and kind of pinch this clay and clean up those rough edges. This is probably like the more rewarding part for me is kind of like fussing and kind of refining things. Clay is really malleable. It can be sculpted and moved. What you'll find though is that the clay during certain stages has certain characteristics. Like when it's wet, I'm really able to pinch and sculpt and move the clay effortlessly. But as it dries, the moisture evaporates off and the clay becomes drier, but it becomes stiffer as well. So this is sort of a technique just called pinching and it's probably like the most primal, um, sort of intuitive way to kind of working with clay. So now that's starting to look like a foot, right?
I can work on this outer edge and kind of smooth this down. So then, let's just pretend I finished and went all the way down on the inside. I do want to take away this fat rim and make it a little bit thinner. So what I can do is take away this clay using a knife, a trimming tool. I'm using this little needle tool as well. So this first project is just trying to get like familiar with the clay, familiar with handling the tools. This wooden knife is really helpful. Your fingers are gonna be great for smoothing down in here, but this wooden knife also is gonna allow you to kind of smooth the inside area. I would suggest like exploring and keeping the outside however you want. The inside I think should be pretty darn smooth because if you're wanting to drink out of it and clean on the inside, imagine trying to clean a rough ceramic cup that's on the inside. So spend some time with your fingers, your back of your wooden knife tool and smoothing things down. I can also take my fingers and start to pinch this rim, kind of thinning it out, making it a little bit more even. One side's higher than the other, we can simply take a little needle tool and sort of trim down the um, lip of the cup. If the outside's rough, I can use my fingers and sort of start to smooth things down. One thing I always see with first, like beginners working with clay, they always want to kind of spray things with water or dip their fingers with water and kind of smooth things down. The clay being this soft right now, you really don't need to. As the clay starts to stiffen up though, water is sort of applied, but when the clay is really damp, you don't really need to add water. It's just going to actually weaken the clay and make it softer and more challenging to work with. So there's three stages of clay. Um, well, there's actually four, but I'll talk about them all. So we have the wet clay that's coming right out of our bag, like what I'm working with. As clay starts to dry, evaporation sort of, um, the water starts to evaporate off. And then we get what's called leather hard clay. And that's when that clay starts to stiffen up quite a bit. That's a good stage for um, carving, doing more details, um, attaching handles. And then we have what's called bone dry clay. And that's when the clay, all the moisture is evaporated away and the pot as stiff, it's hard, but it's also extremely brittle. And then the last other stage we have what is called slip, and essentially all slip is is clay that we've added a lot of water to, so it's more of like a liquid, um, maybe like a yogurt or so. And so we're gonna use that for attaching handles, and it also can be used for decorative purposes too. But um, this is sort of like the rough outline of the cup, if you want, you can kind of go in and carve on the outside. I'm going to do some more demos on surface treatments and decoration. And again, I want to do those when the pot is leather hard. Right now, it's just too soft. Um, so that's my sort of short demo. Let's try some things out and experiment.